All right, guys, we're almost there. We're gonna do the final touches to the 72 volt Ego mini bike. So last time we checked in, we did a fitment test with the battery, with the far driver controller. We also did a fitment test with the lighting. So I have all these lighting wires just kind of routed through the frame and underneath the seat. We also put the panels on just to make sure that everything fit okay. Trying to get the wiring to be the right length was something to think about. We also had to install this ignition switch. So we found this 3D printed uh, mount and basically this ignition switch just goes inside of it and then we just zip tied it to the top of the stem not super secure, not super clean, but it does work. Um, I tried to find an ignition switch that you could attach to the handlebars, but couldn't really find one that didn't have like a voltage meter, which I didn't need. And because this extended bar is covering the hole for the stock ignition switch, we couldn't put it inside of here either. It's also a little bit smaller than usual, so this wouldn't have fit anyway. So the only things that we have left are the speaker that attaches to the Chao G display. Show you guys in a second what that looks like, as well as some phase wire separators. So let me take this out of the bag. All right, so these are the phase wire separators. Before I get into this, let's talk about why you would need it for this particular motor. So as you guys already know, the phase wires for this Soshin motor are huge. And the width or the diameter is about 10.5 millimeters. That's how thick these wires are. Now, when I initially mounted these, I had them zip tied and I also put a neoprene sleeve over it. Now, when I sent that to Ryan Goodyear, he mentioned to take the sleeve off because one, these need to be cooled and two, you actually want these things separated. So you don't want these things squeezing together because on load, these phase wires will heat up and with enough power and enough heat, they'll actually melt into each other. Now there is a lot of insulation. I'm probably not gonna run this super high, but still, it's probably ideal not to keep these things like super tight. So first thing was to take the sleeve off and then have these exposed to the air. And the second thing was ordering these phase wire separators. So Ryan hooked me up with a guy named Cameron Binkle on Facebook. So if you want separators like this, definitely reach out to Cameron Binkle. There's only one Cameron Binkle on Facebook, apparently one of one, uh, super cool guy. And basically he printed these out based on the dimensions of our phase wires, which is 10.5 millimeters. So basically these will help reduce the heat transfer on the phase wires. Uh, you know, if the phase wires melted together, that's really bad. I did that on an electric skateboard once and my skateboard locked up and I went flying because the phase wires just like touched for a second. Um, I can't imagine doing that on something like this, which is, you know, a much more powerful vehicle. And if you're going really fast, that could be uh, super, super bad news. So we printed these out. I'm gonna install them. Uh, they pretty much just go around the phase wires and then they're locked in with a zip tie, I believe. If you have phase wires like this, reach out to Cameron. He'll print you out some if you need them. He also printed out this mount for this speaker which attaches to the Chaoji and connects to the Apple CarPlay. Um, the Chaoji also has an FM radio uh, and a volume control, so you can actually play music from the radio <laughs> through the bike. Um, so yeah, that's an option. What I want to use this for is actually with an app called GlideSphere. So GlideSphere is an app that's made for a speaker that attaches to the Tesla. And what the app does is it creates these custom sounds uh, when you're accelerating, decelerating, that kind of thing uh, for your Tesla. And this is, and it was made to, I guess, be a little bit louder when you're driving uh, because that vehicle is really quiet. Well, this bike is super, super quiet. And I wanted something that would emit some kind of sound. 
uh, while I'm riding by just so uh, for safety reasons uh, so people know I'm coming I mean literally on the first test ride I rode past a group of bikers at like 40 miles per hour and you know I wasn't trying to spook them or anything but I was coming around the bend and they didn't see me or hear me until I was like right up on top of them I was like pretty far away but still you know it's uh it's it's pretty crazy to see this thing fly by and you can't even hear it we're going to attach this and see if it works with the glide sphere i think it will uh, also if you're running navigation from the display you can actually hear it through the bike we'll probably mount it somewhere in here ish maybe uh somewhere hidden and so I'll have to kind of open these panels up and get inside here. But that's about it. After that, I think we're pretty much done with this bike. I also put the stock spring back. I know I had the uh, aftermarket spring um, and it was starting to get really stiff even though I had this thing on its highest setting. It started to feel really stiff and I think I just need a new spring something that's maybe i don't know 400 pounds if i could find one and i think this can just come off uh similar to my Suron spring but we'll see we'll have to look into it let's throw the phase wire separators on let's put the speaker in and then we will do another walkthrough all right guys the 72 volt ego mini bike is finally complete for now basically we had to run the lights uh, through the bike, through the frame. And then we put the panels back on, obviously. Here's the light switch. So we turn that on. And we get the fork lights, indicators over here, the LED strip over here, as well as the tail light. And we also have the 12 volt horn. <laughs> speed switch over here. So put that on level one. Social motor is doing its thing. Lots of power. Level three. Yeah, tons of power. <laughs> I love the sound of that motor. We also installed the phase wire separators made by Cameron Binkle. We also rewired the stock Ego headlight so it's connected to our light switch on and off. Basically, I have the halo turn on and the high beams as well. So it just all turns on at the same time. There's no switching between functionality. I just like it nice and bright. We also installed the speaker for the Chaoji display. The speaker is located right here. So that means that when you connect your phone uh, to the Bluetooth CarPlay of the display, it'll actually play the sounds from your phone. So. It's playing um, from my phone through the bike. Now, obviously, you can do GPS if you want, um, or anything else that's playing through your phone. You can play through the Apple CarPlay. So that's pretty good. The uh, speaker is nice and loud and helpful if you're doing navigation. And the last thing I want to go over is that we were able to retain the latch hardware. So. We can still open our lid. This is where the battery is housed. This is where we can access the charging port. And obviously we made that little hinge for the lid. And fits right on, just like stock. And obviously we have access to the storage right in there. For the most part, everything still looks stock from the outside, but all the internals, the motor, all the electronics are upgraded. It's definitely a different bike. It feels a lot heavier. Everything about it is heavier, so it's not gonna exactly perform like the stock Ego, which I think was really nimble and actually a really good balance of components and weight. So this is slightly more heavier. Definitely feels more like a motorcycle. Is this a mod for everyone? Um, honestly, probably not. This is really the most extreme version of what you could do with this bike. And I think most people do want to retain the Ego batteries 
and the Ego motor. So I think a controller upgrade might be what maybe 80% of people want to do to this bike. And so hopefully Ryan Goodyear and Econic Cycles will work on that. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to go all the way with this bike <laughs> and swap everything out, you could do this as well. There's obviously cheaper solutions <laughs> if you want to do like a 72 volt uh, light electric motorcycle. There's easier ways to do it than to convert an Ego mini bike. But ultimately I wanted to see if it could be done and it could be done. There it is. Uh, maybe I'll have some more content on this thing as I do, you know, other small mods to it, but this is pretty much as far as I can go with it at this point. All right, this is our second official test ride with the 72 volt Ego mini bike. All of the uh, panels are back together. All the wiring is secured. We installed the lighting. So we hit up our buddy Ryan Goodyear just to get some uh, updated power settings. And uh, we made some tweaks to the controller. So hopefully uh, this will show us our true top speed. We did fix the wobbling that was happening in the last video. <laughs> if I told you guys what the issue was, you probably wouldn't even believe me. But basically, uh, one of the tire spoons was like inside of the rim or like inside of the tire. And uh, I guess we didn't catch it when we put on the street tires and <laughs> and that's what was causing the issues. Uh, yeah, kind of crazy. The chances of that actually happening are so, I don't know, so minimal, but it happened to us and good thing we figured it out. So front fork feels good. We put, uh, we charged up the battery. So right now we're at about 86% battery. Nice clear day. But yeah, overall, I think the, the riding experience on this thing is so nice. I did pump a little bit of regen in the controller um, because I think the brakes are okay, but I definitely think they need to be upgraded because of this 72 volt battery and the power of the motor. So we just need something just a little bit stronger. So we're gonna bring the bike to our buddy David at EV Raceworks and he might have some ideas on how to upgrade the brakes. So for now we just have regen kicking in upon throttle release. I don't actually have a regen uh, uh, throttle or anything like that. All right, power level three. Let's bump it up here. Says I got 35 miles per hour on the dash. Okay, here we go. 60. Woo. 63 on the top speed run. <laughs> uh, hopefully that was accurate. Kind of lost control a little bit. Didn't anticipate so many cyclists on this road. Yeah, wow. This is uh, so smooth. Um, I do like how the regen kind of kicks in. Let's swing back around, go back the other way. Here we go. 45, 50, 60, 65. Sorry, getting a little bit of the wobbles. So it looks like uh, 65. On the dash, top speed run. Hopefully that matches up with our Insta360 GPS. Okay, so, wow, I am, I'm really excited <laughs> about this, the power of this bike. This thing is for sure not a kid's bike anymore. Uh, it's definitely more like a light electric motorcycle. So just keep that in mind. You're also gonna wanna make sure that you have, you know, all the proper lighting and wherever else uh, to make sure that this thing is street legal-ish. I mean, I think you can register it. Uh, if you open up the, um, the compartment, the storage compartment, um, or if you, uh, if you look on the frame itself, um, you'll actually see some serial numbers on there. And so you can register it at least as a moped here in Michigan. Where I'm at right now, I think I'm holding steady at 40. That feels like a good speed. 40, 35, 40. 
a little more juice, 45. That's really all you need for a bike like this, you know? You actually don't need much more than that. You know, other than like a brake upgrade, we might have some other little mods to do, but I think for the most part, I'm really happy with this configuration. Uh, I think I might want to install like a reverse button. I think that would be pretty cool. A nice reverse function since the bike is so heavy now. Uh, the reverse function on the stock Ego is really nice. So I think this definitely needs it uh, because it's significantly uh, more heavy. So anyway, um, we're coming into town now. Just got to be careful right here. People coming off the highway, coming off pretty hot. So we just want to make sure that we're coming in smooth. But again, we have the power to keep up with traffic if need be. I'm definitely, I'm definitely draining the battery for sure. Looks like we're at about 67%. So yeah, not, I don't know if this is a bike that you'd want to kind of, you know, pin the throttle down for long periods of time. Once I get into town here, I'm going to be hitting a lot of intersections and a lot of stoplights. And that's kind of where you want a bike like this to be. What else can I say? So yeah, I did post like my 58 mile per hour uphill speed run on my block. And a lot of people were engaging with that, uh, especially in the Ego uh, mini bike modders group uh, a lot of people were interested now in like you know is this going to come in a kit are you going to sell a kit and uh, my answer to that is no i'm not i don't sell anything and all my information is free on youtube um and all the you know all the progress of this build is on youtube again it's not like detailed or step by step but you know, you will need some DIY knowledge, some e-bike knowledge, and links to all the vendors are on there. Powerful Lithium, if you want to reach out. Ryan Goodyear at Iconic Cycles, if you want to reach out. Uh, they're the guys who have, you know, access to the parts that you need. But, you know, it's still the, um, you know, the responsibility is still on you, you know, to, to do your research and to make sure that, you know, even though you get these parts, you know what to do with them. Because... Uh, it's, it's not really about the parts. It's about how you, you know, secure it to the bike and like all this other stuff. So just make sure that you think about that, you know, before you, um, you know, before you consider doing a build like this. Um, it's not easy, uh, even for me. And then, you know, like little things like adding lights and stuff like that, you know, it's just, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> I wish I had a better answer for you guys. Um, it's probably not the answer that you want, but... You know, it's possible um, that this bike can be modded to go very fast in a way that is tasteful and retains, you know, all of the exterior uh, cosmetics. Because anyone can just take a frame and then slap the biggest parts on there and, you know, make it go fast. But there's a certain level of class and a certain level of taste that, you know, you should have when you build a custom bike i think i didn't want to stray too far away from like the uh what makes the ego mini bike interesting which is its form factor and and the plastics mainly uh the insides you know are the insides uh, no one's ever going to see them only you'll know and only the people who are into e-bikes will know so none of that really matters ultimately uh i think when you ride it around and like People have no idea what it is or that they know that it's an ego mini bike and are like why is that going so fast <laughs> or why does it have street tires i think that's where it gets kind of fun because you could get into a lot of interesting conversations with people who you know maybe they're not probably most likely not going to do the same exact build they're probably not going to get the ego mini bike but you'll start talking about things like batteries and controllers and motors and phase wires and you know controller tuning and all this stuff and i think um i think that's always fun when i do a project build like this it's not to save money right it's for yeah it's part of it is for science but i would say most of it is the social aspect of it getting into conversations with people that are not into e-bikes like 
there's a lot of uh, people who just like have this small circle of everyone just congratulating them or just patting them on the back for, for whatever, right? And it's like, that gets pretty boring. Uh, introducing new people to, to, I don't know, to like e-bikes is just super fun and interesting to me. It's like teaching people something that they didn't know before. Will they ever use that in their real life? Probably not, but you know, maybe. <laughs> I think I think there's something to be learned from like all the aspects of an e-bike that you learn about uh, that you can apply to other industries or other things. Um, anyway, I'm kind of rambling now and I don't know what else to say. It's a really cool bike. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I think I'm going to sign off. I think I'm talking too much. Have a great day.